Okay then, uh, a very good evening to all of you. Today, uh, we are going to discuss on, you know, a very common and everybody knows about it. But you know, sometimes uh, we are not concerned about these important issues on poverty and development. And if I am not wrong, most of us who is in this session and who are the student of postgraduate diploma in sustainable science, they must be working in different areas. Uh, some of you are as grassroots level, working in grassroots level. They may have seen about the issues, what we are going to talk on that. But whenever we are looking in some broader perspective, we do not have much uh, concern about what is poverty, how it is linked with deployment. Indeed, we'll try to explore how it has to be linked and how poverty uh, should be, you know, uh, if we know, uh, if we look into the global common efforts of beginning from your sustainable development definition, standard definition means from the World Commission on Environment Development Report, beginning from 1972 Stockholm Conference, we are talking about uh, poverty and development. Sometimes we are blaming to the, um, uh, the group of uh, these people we are under the poverty line. It's uh, one of the causes of uh, environment integration. In the same time also, we sometimes appreciate their responsibility, their efforts in promoting or in conserving biodiversity. But the question is still with us, whether we are able to concern about their issues, whether they have to bring to what we are get, getting the facilities on, what we, I mean, uh, interpret as a development uh, as compared to the, those group of people who are staying far remote areas. Uh, that is what we are going to talk today. Then on the other side, we are understanding the issues of poverty and development since, especially since uh, after Rio plus 20. If you look into uh, the Millennium, Millennium Development Goals, MDGs, and uh, even in Agenda 21, of uh, which was, is one of the output of uh, that um, Rio, uh, Rio, and uh, Rio plus 20 also in Rio plus uh, uh, 20 also in the even in SDGs, it is still become the poverty is still become one of the important goals, in the sense that we have to scale down or we have to end hunger and the poverty at any cost. But what is our concern? How to go about it? That is more important. So let us try to have a brief understanding on the concept of poverty, how we are looking as a policy maker, as a research scholar, or uh, as a, I mean, grassroots level workers. What is your understanding about poverty? How to link with them? Means in the sense, how to bring them in the process of development. That is more important, right? So, it's, uh, as we know that uh, the one of the basic foundation of sustainable development, as sometimes you can use as a basic pillars or foundation or dimension, society is one of its dimension. When you talk about society as one of the dimension, we should not avoid uh, the principle equity when we are talking about development, we should understand human rights and responsibilities in bringing that inclusive or inclusive broader in one sense, we can say that integrative approach to uh, development. Then at last, you know, we have to understand that as I talk, uh, I told you, and everybody knows about uh, uh, that appreciation we are giving to each and every individual a citizen of the world, especially those when we are talking about environment and degradation, when we are talking about environment and conservation, in one side we are appreciating those people, that vulnerable group of people, or sometimes we interpret that as a community ecosystem people, uh, their role in preserving the biodiversity, in preserving the ecosystem. In that sense, we can say they are the I mean, uh, keepers of uh, that sustainability of the planet. 
so their participation also needs to be understand then when we are looking towards the road towards sustain, uh, development sustainable development we sometimes forget our responsibility as a homo, homo sapiens and we we have to understand the ethical value the ethics of uh, that our uh, towards other living creatures so when you understand that there is existence then we have to respect that existence of not only us for other species right so when we respect their existence then the equation of ethics should be moral responsibility and ethics should be bring together so in the same way in our society from the beginning whenever we have discussion we talk about that we're talking about development and uh, we know that if you look from that pillar of uh, the social pillars or from the dimension of um, uh, that social dimension and uh, if we discuss that the social pillars from the point of sustainable development we know that development gives one of the important it may be direct or indirect output that brings uh, that social inequality or social inequality inequity though we are getting development in other sense but in the other way it creates another society who is not i mean equal so we have to understand that so in this uh, we will we are trying to touch upon the basic needs and the poverty what is the poverty and what are basic needs and uh, when we talk about the blood manage you no know, i mean everybody are looking towards you know uh, or say uh, way where you know better than something or other no we are human so whenever you're getting something and uh, you are looking beyond that so when we you see the development right so everybody it's each and everybody should have that right to go towards the direction right so then at last we will try to understand in indian context about the concept of poverty development uh, and the basic needs so it is about only half an hour or so uh, session so when you talk about uh, poverty we can uh, look you no know, if you look academically or technically if you look into that word poverty you know uh, these two kind of poverty exist here one is relative poverty another is absolute poverty when you talk about relative poverty it is conceptualized as a deficiency or shortage of some sort typically in comparison either to the living standard of other within the same society or culture so if you look into this definition you will find out that somewhere or other across the globe everywhere in any society poverty exists because as i told them everybody knows that the one of the important output of development is okay we are able to i mean uh, able to have a better life but in the same time it creates a unequal society so that kind of unequality in that same society or culture this and uh, in that you will find out difference in living condition or living standard that is called relative or that poverty in the same way in other side you will find out a group a common uh, a number of uh, a group of people Uh, we do not have an adequate provision that means the basic adequate provision they do not have even if you look into a simple way where we are talking about food shelter and clothing so those kind of people group of people uh, that marginalized group of society they are called absolute that kind of uh, poverty that is called absolute absolute poverty so if you look into uh, Uh, in a brief if you look into uh, that some of the definition uh, most of the time in, uh, in that uh, global context the world bank gives this definition that can, poverty tend to concentrate i mean they concentrate on income only so it is uh, about us dollar 1.25 per day as a poverty line now it has been increased up to 1.9 us dollar but if you look into that definition also that definition has some i mean drop back because when we take uh, when they take that um, study in trying to compile the data and where they have taken to 
group of underdeveloped countries only. So it may not be applicable, this definition of 1.25 or 1.9 dollar per day may not be applicable, uniformly applicable across the uh, uh, nation, across different nation. Okay. So if you look in the definition of poverty, and you will see how our understanding of poverty in different time period and a different approaches. For example, if you look into the from World Bank Poverty Lines or MDC indicator, indicator when they apply, especially that was uh, very common in 1960s to 1970s, they look into economic deficiency as a poverty. And uh, because in that time, you know, especially uh, that was just after one decade or two decades after uh, World War II, most of the part of the world, they were having, they are suffering a lot of, you know, uh, issues, especially, you know, we are talking about a economic growth. So in that time, the understanding was on economic uh, way only. That's why in that time, they're looking uh, that poverty is an economic deficiency, right? Then 1970s to 80s, if you look into this data, 1970s did uh, where uh, the global different nations in the global context, they realized that their environment and degradation is there. It is especially uh, from 1972 Stockholm Conference, we realized the importance, uh, the impact of environment and degradation. In that time, we were trying to, or uh, we are, I mean, relate the poverty in environment and degradation, right? So, in that, and through that, through that, our understanding was that the approach of understanding prop, uh, that poverty should be basic needs. When we talk about basic needs is the physical and material. What is that? When we talk about physical material, uh, physical as a sectoral impasses is that it talks about individuals or societies that their well-being, well, well-being and the materials means your environment and quality. So that institution applied to this approach are international labor office and MDZ indicators what we are talking about in the, sorry, in the beginning of this century. Then come up 1990s to present that that is uh, just after means or in the beginning of the when we started to talk about United Nations Convention on Environment and Development, where we are talking about the relation and the basic relation between environment development in that time, from that time onwards, the time onwards, approach of understanding or uh, looking for eradication of poverty was multidimensionality. Uh, it talks important into four, I mean, uh, sectoral impasses. One is physical, what I we were talking about, in, uh, then about individual health, individual well-being, social well-being, then material means, you know, environment and social means social relations, psychological and all these things are important on the, uh, and uh, again in the political because uh, that is more important. If there is no political will, it may not be possible to achieve all these things. So that was basically, if you look at that kind of multidimensionality approach of understanding poverty will get in World Bank Development Report. Then, uh, then uh, yeah, when uh, then it started with you know post uh, that the Rio conference that this 1990s or when in the same time when World Bank approach was through uh, multidimensionality then if you look into the how the concept of sustainable development was started how the issues of environment development when we were talking about 60s and 70s uh, also uh, we were talking about environment degradation environment issues is issues at local level. When you realize that pollution is not political boundary, pollution has no physical boundary, then that's why we have common efforts, uh, global common effort of 1973 Stockholm conference. So later on, we know we have, it was evidence with different reports, different conferences and different convention. So when it's realized that, that as an expert, for example, if you go as an expert, and then you talk to the people, what, for example, what we appreciate those vulnerable group of the society who are staying there in the highly remote areas as we call, uh, we call them as a ecosystem shivir. Then if you talk to them as an expert, that will not work because at last, whatever you are going to do, it's 
then you will go for five days or 10 days or a year in that place. Later on, who are going to handle all those things, who are going to take care of, by, uh, who are going to take care of all that uh, in that place. On the other hand, if you go into new places, you know, the farmers, the people knows better than you. So we need to understand those people. For example, if you feel hungry, and uh, if you feel hungry, I will not know whether you are hungry or which kind of food you want to eat, right? So the person, if you are hungry, you should know what you are, what you want to eat. For what you are hungry, whether you are hungry will be will be able to I am mean, satisfied with a uh, roti or uh, with a paratha or with a rice. So that is important. That's why we should tag them as an expert, right? So uh, who is using this Afsal must be, yeah, please don't do that. Okay, you are very mature, right? It is recording. So, so the point is that, no, so we need to talk them as an expert. We, we have to bring them in participation. That is reflected in the World Bank voices of the poor initiative. Then 1990s, you know, if you look into the, that post world uh, that, uh, United Nations Convention on Environment Development, the same way some organizations like UNDP, when they prepare that human poverty index, you will see uh, from that multidimensional poverty index to capable multidimensional poverty index, et cetera, from that multidimensionality, they are also looking to capability. No, because when you implement, we are going to implement something, if you are looking that, means when we are saying the development, development has to be implemented by the institution, by the governments, by the authority, means uh, the government. So when we say government has to implement it, so with participation of the uh, people, then we need a proper institutional capabilities of handling all those things. So this is a brief about the definition of property, how you have to understand and how it was with approach of understanding poverty from 1960s onwards, means we can say this is the genesis of the concept of poverty from 60s onward, okay. Then uh, when I, uh, when in the first, you know, you, when we talk about two kind of uh, poverty, one is related poverty, and one is abject poverty. The major issues is abject poverty, right? When we talk about the major issues of uh, abject proper, uh, poverty, what is more important is, no, we need to understand the basic human needs, right? That's, I told you, everybody knows that even in the today's uh, modern world in Delhi, metropolitans, you will see a number of peoples like beggar, you can say beggar or others, even they do not have what we're talking about fundamental three important basins, right? So we have to, the point is that what I'm going to say is the point is that we have to understand the poverty from the point of basic needs. So that's why in 1970s, when in that time, the economists, they understood, they adopted the basic needs approach to development, right? Because they realized that, you know, uh, 60s and they realized in 60s, the economic uh, point of view is that uh, income, income, economic, they look to the income, you know, monetary value, but they, un they realized that monetary value is not a point. That's why we have to understand the physical and ecological condition. That's why they know that there is economic growth is failing. So to elevate property in many of the de de developing countries, we need to understand the basic needs of the people of what you identify as a poverty line, what you are identified as a group of people who are poverty. So that's why the basic needs approach to development was focused that needs that is on that to ensure that everyone has to access, has to access enough basic goods and services to maintain living, a level of living above a basic minimum. At least you have, you need to have a basic minimum as a prime objective of economic development. Because when, uh, when we, uh, when, because when we talk about uh, uh, that uh, basic needs, you no, know, uh, what we are talking about three important basic needs that is, uh, that is, uh, that is food, uh, cloth, and the shelter. 
Okay. So without that, and if you have the economic also, your economic, if you have money also, you will not be able to uh, have a uh, economic growth. So that that is their understanding. So, so the basic needs to be precisely understand basically in the core areas of as we are talking about the food, water, health, that is physical, that is important. That's they are talking about when we're talking on multidimensional way of uh, approach of um, uh, this uh, poverty, health, education, and shelter. These are the basic, precisely basic needs of uh, human, uh, that basic needs of humanity. It's more than that, we have a number of needs, you know, that is very dynamic. But when we talk about them, that abject poverty, if they have food, if they have good water, if uh, they are healthy, means health, health-wise, those basic health nutrition, if they have nutritious food, at least if they have education, if they have shelter, at least they will be able to uh, go ahead with their life, right? In the meantime, I have to admit the uh, uh, student, that's why. So if you look into the, this growth of understanding of uh, this definition of poverty and the basic needs, definition of uh, basic needs, we'll find out the international convenient economic, social, and cultural right enter into 1976. And in that, it encompasses all, uh, most of what would be generally described as basic needs goods that are the right to food, health, center, education, and the work. No, here you will see, we'll see, you understand the work. Because when we, do, we talk about basic needs, if we do not work, can be look at your livelihood, as well as to other non-material aspects of life, which many could include as basic needs. Like in today's, I mean, uh, world, you can add more and more, but the first is you need to have food, health, shelter, education, and work. Yeah, that is more important. Then, Come to the development. When you have the basic needs, then everybody will expect higher than, I mean, you know, if you see something is better than it is human tendency or human behavior, we want to improve something or other. And in the same way, if you are able to give the basic need to that vulnerable group of people, then they also, know, needs to have, or they also think about the development in one sense. Other sense, to give them or to have the access means three important, uh, three important is that it should be availability, access and affordability. To, that, to bring that, the development is also important. So everybody should have an equal right to development. That's why UN General Assembly 1957 affirmed that a balanced integrated social and economic development would contribute towards the promotion and the maintenance of peace and security. When you talk about it, you know, peace and security, social progress, better standard of living, and, and what we're looking towards, the social progress, standard of better standard of living, peace and security. No, that's need to be understood from a balanced integrated social and economic development. Right, because when World Bank says and you know, one economy says there should be economic development, but economic development should be balanced with the social development also. That's it's focusing on that. So to bring that, then we have to respect the fundamental human right and fundamental freedom for all. That's why uh, in 1968, International Conference on Human Rights asserted the profound uh, interconnection between the realization of human rights and economic development. And later on in 1969, declaration of social progress development that renewed the UN's commitment to the importance of a social, just social order. So it is not about your economic development, but there needs a social order, right? When you do not have basic needs, then you do not have 
fundamental freedom or human right, then it will not be possible to bring that your uh, or security that is more right. So later on again, uh, in 1981, the UN convened a working group of the government and expert on the right to development. See, it comes into right to development, right from human rights, then right to development. And later asked it to propose draft declaration on the right to development. And so in 1986, December 4, UN General Assembly, that the proposal and the declaration was happened, that is declaration on the right to development. So that's called United Nations Declaration Right to Development. The point is that when we're talking about the poverty, ending poverty, ending hungry, to end the hungry, there shouldn't be any poverty. That can be achieved when they have the right to development. That the right to development has to be given to them that on, then only what we're talking about the principle of equity and social justice then only we will be able to bring. So the point is that in the process of development, the output should not be social inequity or inequality. It should be equal development, equal right, equal access. That's why the, in this way, the United Nations Declaration of Right to Development defines the right to development is an inalienable human right by virtue of which every human person and all peoples are entitled to participate in, contribute to, and enjoy economic, social, cultural, and political development, in which all human rights and the fundamental freedom can be fully realized. This is the exact definition This we have to, um, everybody should consider, I mean, to, uh, to concern about all these things. Development should not be only what we are looking as economic development, it is only the infrastructure development. Access, affordability, accessibility, rights, participation, everything should consider, right? Maybe look into uh, that, uh, how you can uh, bring the right to development. Here, you know, uh, that was, uh, That was in 1986. Now, if you then it is followed by second UN World Conference on Human Rights, the Vienna Declaration, that's we call that is commonly known as Vienna, Vienna uh, that Vienna Declaration 1993, that reaffirm that United Nations Declaration Right to Development, that reaffirm <clears throat> that the right to development established in declaration as a universal and inalienable right and integral part of fundamental human rights. So right to development should be a part of fundamental human right. And it should also commit to the international community the obligation to cooperate in order to realize this right. Thus right to development was recognized as, as human right also. And that human, that kind of human right which integrated economic, social and cultural rights with civil and political rights, the manner that was ambitious at the beginning of the post-World War II human rights movement. As you know, most of you, we know that how United Nations was established. It is because it's basically based on the human rights movement, right? So in that way, right to development is also become one of the important, and uh, I mean, uh, that uh, movement uh, that achieved uh, as a part of human rights. Right. So here you will see the Vienna Declaration not only reaffirm that the promotion and protection of such a right is the first responsibility of the government, but also reiterated the commitment contained in Article 56 of the Charter to tax joint and a separate action stating specifically states should cooperate with with its other in ensuring development and eliminating obstacles to development. The international community should promote an effective international cooperation for the realization of the right to development and elimination of obstacle to development. Now, second come into international cooperation, right? Which is also one of the important goals uh, this is right. 
then when we have the right to development, then you know development cannot be taken in one second or uh, in one process. So there is also a process, right to a process of development is also important. That is one of the important basic step in achieving your basic human needs, basic needs, which was not with them, those group of society, which was not with them. So they should have a process, a right to a process of development. So nature of this process of development is centered around the concept of equity and justice with the majority of the pop, pop, uh, population. Because you cannot say that if this part of the country or this part of the state can have this much uh, infrastructure, right? So in the same way, it brings about a cons uh, it brings about equity and justice to all. So we need to strengthen those poor and deprived group of the people, giving a right to a process of development. So let us have a quick look in the Indian context. How we're understanding since post independence, uh, pre independence, how we understand the poverty and the basic human needs. In 1938, in a note for the Subcommittee of National Planning Committee of the Indian National Congress, a goal of minimum living standard for a total population in terms of, you know, here you will see, even World Bank give, in 1960s, they give the definition of poverty in terms of monetary value, means income. But, you know, that is, as in India, we already talk about your physical needs, nutrition, because you, without that physical, Needs means nutritional uh, that uh, requirement. You will not be able to, I mean, earn the money that we realize we understand since that time. Then, clothing, housing. These are the basic needs which were proposed in that time, 1938. So, no income levels per capita were determined for this. So, what here it is indicated is we are talking about three important needs: roti, kapra, and makan. Right. So in the 1960s, the issues of nationally desirable minimum consumer expenditure was assessed by a working group in the planning committee. Means after forced independence, now we also look towards that, in, that income. But that doesn't mean that we do not take care of those three important parameters that we taken care. And that it is estimated that an average income of rupees 20 per person per day should be sufficient to meet the energy requirement in terms of calories and a basic minimum for clothing and shelter. We are here, we're talking about this income in the sense from that, uh, from that perspective that that money is required to meet the energy requirement that is food, right? And other clothing and shelter. Later on, again, and uh, two economists, Dande and Rutt, let us estimated 2,250. That Deloitte talks on uh, calorie and converted that into monetary value. So, enter through that way 14.5 rupees in rural areas and 22.5 rupees in urban areas per person per day was, I mean, demarcated as a poverty line of uh, that uh, definition of poverty line, right? Then it was. Again, revised. It was revised in 49.09 uh, in 1970s and 56.64 in, uh, in case of urban areas. So, that later on 1993, it was further revised, right? And this, uh, in 19 uh, Tendulkar, subsequently, that Professor Tendulkar, Tendulkar Committee, they also revised this. Rangarajan Committee also expanded this further, the concept of that. So recently in ICMI in 2010, they again decalculated because when you I, when you talk about even nutritional need also, the nutritional needs today may be different with uh, that uh, that was 20 years back, 30 years back. That's why ICMI find out that nutritional needs based on the population composition of the country and assess this at 2,155 kilo calorie per day per person in rural areas in 2,090 kilo calorie in urban areas. Why there is decreasing in kilo calorie per day of nutritional uh, needs? Just that will be discussed later on. That is my question to all of you. Because if you look into 1938, you know, you will see kilo calorie uh, that nutrition 
calorie per adult worker is you know 2400 right here they icm recognized 2155 they determined that based on their calculation why it is there so this is how it was calculated now if you look into if you compare what india have i mean fixed as a poverty i mean uh, that demarcation of poverty ours is 2 dollar uh, 2.44 right in indian then in case of world bank it is 1.9 dollar 1.9 so you will see why there is different so the reason i told you that when world bank uh, they committed when they calculated it they were taking the average of under developed country then question come when we are talking about the poverty when we realize that the uh, that how we have to understand the poverty how to bring that development how they have to take as a i mean in the process of uh, development then number of challenges there one of the important challenges you know we have positive uh, positive side of globalization but if you look into when we are talking about uh, basic human needs sometimes i do feel that globalization is one of the challenges because it's bring i mean more inequalities right even if you go to uh, and in highly uh, remote area also you will find out inequalities it is because of globalization right then the second one is the large carbon illicit inter country financial outflows that is happening in front of us because of uh, the globalization for example <clears throat> some of the i mean material some of the i mean whatever you say product may be um, may not be able to sell uh, that uh, with a high profit in one kind of one country but it can be sell Uh, in another country in that transition you will find out that you know uh, this group of people uh, that uh, that is a uh, vulnerable group of the society they were used as a medium to transport and all these things corruption and the bribes you know when we talk about development right to development right to process of development and if you talk about in india also different schemes we are giving for the uh to wipe out its uh, poverty and to free from hunger but those schemes sometimes it when it reaches to the um, uh, the stack all the right stack all the you know most of the monies I and mean, that's uh, that particular that important um, uh, what you want to reach to them it is not uh, getting to them so it is through corruption and bribes we are not able to achieve that then it no corruption and economic growth economic growth as i know when we are not balancing the economic growth with that of social means in the sense that from the multi dimensional aspect of understanding poverty economic growth bring more social inequality uh, that created another scenario of as we are talking about that uh, the social crime and it's and it, and you will see a number of uh, social issues because of the inequality in equal society because of in equal society which is the product of uh, that uh, unidirectional economic growth right so summarizing that uh, can uh, we can summarize that poverty has at least two dimension the first is income poverty which relates to what percentage of a country's population subsists below a minimum level of income or consumption the second is related to the capability of the poor to come out of the poverty in a sustainable manner by having increased access to facilities like health education housing and nutrition that that's why i love this particular second part that talk about uh, availability accessibility affordability so from this perspective of realizing human rights the concept of poverty goes much beyond just income poverty so it signifies an unacceptable level of deprivation of well being a level that a civilized society considers incompatible with human dignity that's all uh, this is how we have to understand uh, about poverty and uh, uh, and uh, how to bring uh, if you are looking for that um, uh, that uh, eradication of poverty we have to understand 
all these apples. Now session is going to be, thank you, thank you very much. We'll have discussion session. Let me.